What's going on, everybody? Thank you all for joining me today. If you haven't already, please make sure you hit the like button because that's the most important thing you can do for me on this channel. What it does is that it helps to make sure that those who are subscribed to the channel will indeed get the notifications and it also helps to push this video through the YouTube algorithm as well. Secondly, if you're new to the channel or maybe you've been ghost watching this channel for quite some time now, I see you ghost watchers, please do me a favor and yourself a favor by hitting the subscribe button as well as the bell notification next to the subscribe button to be notified whenever I release a new video. And lastly, please make sure you share this video out on your social media platforms to your family and friends to inform them on this news and information. And yes, that does help to give me a slight boost in the YouTube algorithm as well. And with the introduction out of the way, let's get into today's news. And today we are headed back to Gotham City, formerly known as New York City, because recently, I believe it was at the top of the morning, Monday morning, a illegal Venezuelan migrant shot two cops, shot two cops as they were pursuing him. And this illegal immigrant Venezuelan migrant uh, is also a suspect in a host of purse snatching and phone snatching uh, incidents that have occurred, I believe, throughout Queens, right? Um, and we all know of these purse and, and phone snatching incidents that occur while these migrants are riding on mopeds. Uh, they largely, if not exclusively, target women. I don't think I've ever heard of these situations where a man was targeted. It's almost exclusively women uh, that are under attack by these uh, illegal immigrant Venezuelan migrants uh, who are predominantly male uh, committing these crimes, right? So let's get into it because there's an interesting tidbit of information concerning this case uh, that was just released recently, right? So most of you might know about this case already, but what many of you don't know is that his immigration case has been dismissed. Now, it wasn't dismissed after he shot the two cops, but prior to him shooting the two cops, his immigration case was dismissed. So we're gonna get into what all that actually means as we go through this article here. And yes, the link to this article will be in the description box below. So you can read it for yourself in entirety uh, without my commentary. Now, this article is titled, Migrant Accused of Shooting Two NYPD Cops Had Immigration Case Dismissed Within a year of illegally crossing into the U.S. Let's get into it. The Venezuelan migrant accused of shooting two NYPD cops during the early hours of Monday morning crossed into the U.S. illegally last year. But the case against him has already been dismissed. The Post can exclusively reveal Bernardo Castro Mata, 19 years old, who shot one officer in the chest and the other one in the leg after they attempted to stop his, his moped in Queens, had a hearing in Chicago on May 6th where an immigration judge closed his case according to ICE sources. Now, remember what we discussed in one of our live streams here sometime it was last week. And that's why you all need to be subscribed to the channel and hit that bell notification so you're informed of when I go live as well. Because we discussed how Biden is fast tracking asylum seeker claims. But what we didn't know was that what that meant from what it seems like here is that fast tracking the claims means we're just dismissing them altogether. The information emerged less than 24 hours after the Post exposed the Biden administration's dismissal of asylum cases and deportation orders against 350,000 migrants because they didn't have criminal records or aren't deemed a national security threat. Those migrants are also under no obligation to leave the country and no longer monitored by Immigration and Custom Enforcement, ICE, making them undocumented. The Biden administration is allowing foreigners to violate our immigration laws at every possible opportunity with no finality, no resolution of their cases. And that's exactly what's going on right now. We're allowing this mass asylum fraud to take, to take place and there isn't any type of real resolution happening, which is deportation. 
deportation is the only resolution that needs to be happening when we're faced with so many fraudulent asylum cases, especially when they're committing violent crimes like this. But what's crazy about all this is that this individual right here that shot two cops and is a suspect in a host of other robberies and uh, uh, purse snatchings, he's not going to get deported. He's not going to get deported. He'll get a slap on a wrist. He might do a little bit of time in jail. I don't know maybe two years, something like that, three years tops, I don't know, something like that. And then he'll be re-released back into the citizen population of New York City, but he's not getting deported. Even if there's an ICE detainer that's been put out on him for NYPD to hand him over to ICE, NYPD is not allowed to honor that detainer because NY, because New York City is a sanctuary city in which they are not allowed by law to collaborate with ICE, right? And they're not allowed to partner with ICE in order to remove illegal immigrants off the street. They're not allowed to do that. But let's get back into this article. This is just the latest example proving that the government does not have the capacity to adequately vet large numbers of people randomly pouring across our borders. Former ICE chief of staff, John Fear, who is now at the Center for Immigration Studies, told The Post. Mata illegally crossed the border into Eagle Pass, Texas, where he was caught and arrested, but later released in 2023. The Venezuelan national failed to provide an address to authorities, which assigned him an immigration court in Chicago for proceedings, according to an ICE source. Now, mind you, he never lived in Chicago, because if you read other articles about him, which this article doesn't get into, he always stayed in New York. For the most part, he was held up at a hotel in New York this entire time, but ICE had him registered in Chicago. So it goes to show how backwards the entire system is altogether. ICE didn't respond to the post when reached for comment about Mata's case, because obviously the post wants to know, well, wait a minute, this guy's been in New York the entire time. Why did you have him assigned to Chicago? But here's the thing, and the reason that I have that highlighted in blue, I don't put anything on ICE. I don't charge ICE with anything negative. Everything goes back to Biden and the DNC because they are the ones who allowed this madness to continue and to go on. Uh, and I should say they are the ones that started this, right, and opened the floodgates to illegal immigration to begin with. You can't be mad at ICE when they're not given the tools to do their job and you literally have a president sitting in office who refuses to cooperate with them and allow them to do their job in any meaningful capacity alongside with mayors and governors of states like Illinois, Chicago, New York, New York City, uh, Los Angeles, California, where they won't cooperate with ICE either. You have an entire political apparatus right now that refuses to cooperate in any meaningful capacity with ICE to remove illegal immigrants off the streets and to deport them. So once again, I say all that to say, I get why ICE wouldn't respond to them because I'm sure they're very embarrassed by all this, but I don't put any of the blame on ICE. They're doing the best they can when they're literally dealing with opposition on all sides when it comes to them just simply trying to do their job. So I just wanted to make that point very clear and hopefully you all have that same understanding as well. Now let's carry on. The sweeping closing of cases by the Biden administration means the migrants are not granted or denied asylum, but their case is removed from immigration courts altogether. Once cases are closed, the subject is no longer in removal proceedings to deport them, which is the government's default position for all immigrants admitted at the border. Such migrants can't apply for benefits, financial aid, a work porn permit, or vote in elections, immigration lawyers have told the Post. However, once a case is terminated, once a case is terminated, they can reapply for asylum or seek other forms of legal status in the U.S. And here's the thing also, right? And I don't have that highlighted to, as a standout point, but I should have. Uh, though they can't technically apply for benefits, financial aid, uh, work permits, and things of that nature, that's not necessarily true. And sanctuary cities like where I am in Los Angeles, they have a host of benefits that they can apply for. They have a host of benefits that they can apply for. And I'm pretty sure that in New York and Chicago, 
where they haven't implemented specific benefits that are directly for illegal immigrants that they can apply for in areas where they haven't applied that yet, they will. So that really doesn't mean anything. That really doesn't mean anything. Just because you're an illegal immigrant doesn't mean that you're now barred from being able to participate in these entitlements, you can call them, like financial aid benefits, a work permit, you know, unemployment, things of that nature. They're not barred from that at all in these sanctuary cities. But I digress. Let's carry on. A 2022 memo issued by ICE excuse me, a 2022 memo issued by ICE's principal legal advisor, Carrie Doyle, and seen by the Post instructed prosecutors at the agency to permit case terminations for migrants who aren't deemed national security threats. Well, what does that simply mean? You can be a common criminal. You can engage in purse snatchings and phone snatchings and attacking women in this way uh, because technically, and I guess legally, that doesn't necessarily make you a national security threat. That just makes you a common criminal in the United States of America, but you're not a national security threat. So I find the choice of language and wording that they're using to justify dismissing these cases very interesting. Meanwhile, President Joe Biden is poised to issue an executive order to close the southern border once the number of migrant crossings reaches a certain number per day of either 2,500 or 4,000, according to sources. Federal authorities recorded a daily average of 5,900 crossings in April, excluding gotaways who sneaked over the border and into the U.S. escaping apprehensions. And understand, when you're talking about gotaways, you're talking about hardcore criminals, as far as I'm concerned, because there's no no reason for you to be a gotaway when you know and understand that under the Biden administration, you can cross the border at any at any portion, right? It doesn't matter if it's a legal port of entry or an illegal port of entry. It's irrelevant. As long as you cross the border and surrender to the border authorities, you will automatically be granted uh, an asylum case. When you know this to be true, but you still choose to evade the border authorities, right? When you still choose to evade border patrol and you then become a quote, got away, that lets me know that you came here to commit crime. You're a criminal because there's no reason for you to be a got away. They were going to let you in regardless, right? And we already see that they're dismissing cases left and right. So if you chose to be a gotaway, that's because you have a lot of, as they say, you know, slang terms, you have a lot of smut on your jacket. You got a lot of smut on your name, got a lot of dirt on your jacket that if, that if you were to go through the proper process, which is the modern day Biden administration, administration proper process of just surrendering and turning yourself into the authorities for them to give you an asylum case. You have so much dirt on your jacket and smut on your name in whatever country you came from that you're probably in our system here in America. That's the only reason that you would evade Border Patrol when there isn't any real reason to. But let's get back into it. Fear, however, said the order is too late and the damage to American safety has already been done. And I 100 percent agree with what fear said. And I quote, he continues to say, the Biden administration doesn't seem to care much about the fallout from their open border policies with their apparent goal of trying to legitimize this chaos through executive order. If they wanted less illegal immigration and fewer problematic people coming here, they'd be increasing deportations and invoking harsher penalties for foreigners who game the system. Instead, they continued to welcome the lawlessness and subsequent harm to American society, Fear said. And I 100% am in agreement with Mr. Fear. I'm 100% percent in agreement with him. It's too little too late. The damage has already been done. And if you are actually serious about resolving these matters, what you would do is start deporting everyone. That's what you would do. The moment you cross the border illegally, you're deported. The moment you get caught committing a crime, you're deported. The moment that I catch you, 
And I see that, especially if you're a military aged male and you came here by yourself. Yeah, no, 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 no. You, you're just you're out. You're out. You're out of here because most likely you already skipped out on your trial date anyways, as most do. The majority do. Uh, that's how you'd be handling it. Uh, but that isn't how they're handling it. Biden isn't engaging in any type of deep, real deportation efforts. Uh, what he's engaging in and what we see him doing is dismissing cases and dismissing trials. That's what he's doing and allowing these folks to stay here unvetted and free, essentially to commit crime. Like we saw this guy Mata did. He didn't have a criminal record when he crossed the border. He wasn't deemed a national security threat. But the moment he got here, he immediately engaged in crime and it escalated more and more and more from purse snatching, cell phone snatchings. If you read this article in its entirety, because I'm stopping it as we're getting towards the end, you'll even see that he's even accused in one of the purse snatchings of hitting a woman in the face. He wasn't a national security threat. He didn't apparently have a criminal record wherever he came from. But he was allowed to stay regardless just to do exactly what he did in New York City. Excuse me, just to do exactly what he did in Gotham City. And with all that being said, that does it for today's news. So thank you all for joining me today. Hit the like button on your way out. Subscribe to the channel if you're new to the channel. And don't forget to follow me on Telegram at TD Media Group. The link to my Telegram is pinned in the comment section below and is in and is in the description box below as well thank you all for your time and until the next video peace and have a great afternoon